Fonda was terminally ill for seven years with many different terminal diseases. Her heart didn't work, the electrical system had failed in it, the pacemaker couldn't keep up with her most of the time. And her heart didn't work, she had lupus, she formed blood clots throughout her body, her metabolic system didn't work, her body didn't metabolize protein C. She had so many different things wrong with her that there was no hope. The doctors gave her no hope. They would keep her in the hospital and try to work on this or work on that just to combat whatever was taking place, Brother Scrappy, to help it. But that's seven years that we walked through, and seven years was God's perfect timing, and we walked with God. During that seven years, I gave my heart to Jesus. I got saved. Amen. A person that had no interest in getting saved turned to God. Yes. And that's a testimony within itself. Yes. That I'll give some time. Yes. But those seven years, Scrappy, I, I wouldn't want to live through them again, but I wouldn't take nothing for them. Amen. Because with that seven years, there was a relationship built that was yeah. built down on our knees with Jesus Christ that can never be taken away. And I, I had a relationship with him during that period of time as it began to grow that I wouldn't take anything for. Amen. Yes. If you have your Bibles with you tonight, let's turn to the Revelation chapter 12 and let's start with verse 10. And I'm going to be giving one of Fonda's many testimonies tonight. And the reason that I give most of her testimonies, Ethel, is that she has a hard time remembering during that period of time because, Vita, you can remember that she didn't know where she's at part of the time. But in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10, it says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. And do you still have your testimony tonight? I'm going to be a giving Fonda's testimony here in a few minutes, but what about your testimony? How long has it been since you gave your testimony to those that are lost and dying? How long has it been since you told someone what God has done for you? Oh, we need to lift up the name of Jesus and we need to let people know what a God that we serve and how big a God that we serve and what he'll do for his people. And we need to tell them that what he did for one, he'll do for another. What he did for her, he'll do for you. Yes. What he did for me, he'll do for you. Yes. But we have to have that relationship with him. Yes. In the book of Psalms in chapter 18, it says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord yes. who is worthy to be praised and so shall I be saved from mine enemies. The Bible teaches me that he will answer me when he calls and that he's worthy to receive yes. praise from his children tonight. When was the last time that we lifted up our voices and began to praise him for those testimonies that we have? All those times, Fonda, how many times have we lifted up our voices and said, Lord, I love you and I praise you for what you've done. I praise you for where you brought me from and what you brought me through. He's worthy to be praised. Amen, amen. The Bible teaches us in Hebrews 11, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. My Lamb of God. Yes. Let me read it just a little bit different. Now faith, which is the assurance or belief in Jesus Christ, is the substance or the confidence or foundation or firm trust of things hoped for, things we trust Him for, the evidence or the proof of things not seen. But without faith, in verse 6 it says, It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When does the last time that you were diligently seeking the Lord? Oh, Lamb of God. I used to thank Brother Scrappy that 
we would pray. Uh, a little prayer saying two or three words doesn't cut it. Uh, but when you're looking and facing death or the one that you love is facing death, uh, those prayers, those little minutes become hours uh, when you stay down on your knees uh, and you cry out to Jesus Christ, uh, oh Lamb of God, uh, oh knowing that he hears us, uh, reading his word and having confidence, Brother Scrappy, that when I call upon his name, uh, that as a child of God, I have confidence that he hears my prayers uh, and I know that he will answer my cries uh, when I call upon him because I'm his child and you're his child tonight. Amen. You're his child tonight. Your daddy is standing and his table is spread and he's looking tonight to hand out those things to his children all that they have need of. Oh, Lamb of God, Lamb of God. Are you ready to praise him tonight? Are you ready to lift his name up? I'm going to do quite a bit of reading before I give Fonda's testimony. And bear with me. But you'll see where we're going here shortly. In Acts chapter 16 and verse 16. And it said, It came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. And some followed Paul and us and said, cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. And brought them unto the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks. How many people here tonight are in prison? Or have been in prison from sickness, from sin, being bound down. Oh, Lamb of God. How many people in our communities that we know of are in bondage tonight from different things uh, in this world? Uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, oh, Lamb of God. What's the difference whether you're in a natural prison or you're in a spiritual prison where Satan has got you bound down uh, with different things of this world? Uh, oh, Lamb of God. But what I'm telling you, uh, that there's hope tonight. In verse 25 it said, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and praised unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, and the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. Oh, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God. When they begin to sing praises unto God, God begin to move. Things begin to change in that old prison that they were in. Oh, Lamb of God, when we begin to tell him and praise him for what he's done, things will begin to happen in our lives tonight. An earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Have you got that faith tonight to praise him? Have you got the faith tonight to hold up the name of Jesus? Have you got the faith tonight to begin to cry out in the middle of the battle that you're in and begin to praise God because who He is, that He's your Savior? Have you got the faith tonight to stand in the middle of that battle when your loved one, it, it don't look like there's any hope, and begin to sing praises unto God because He is the great I Am? Yes. Amen. Have you got the faith to praise Him tonight? Have you got the faith to stand in the middle of that battle? There was a man in the Word of God in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 whose name was Jehoshaphat. The armies were coming against him. There was no hope, Mike. There was no hope. But he began to cry out to God. He called a fast. He called people to pray. And he humbled himself before God and he began to seek God with his whole heart and began to cry out to Him. And God began to move for him. And just as he moved for him tonight, as he moved for Paul and Silas, as he moved for Jehoshaphat, he'll move for you. Amen. My Lamb of God. He began to cry out to him and he reminded him. 
In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 9, of his promises that he had made unto the children of Israel, do we remind God of his word? Do we take God, but your word declares. Your word says. Oh, do we remind God of his word when those situations that we're facing don't seem like there's no hope? Do we remind him? Lord, your word says that you are the healer, that by your stripes I am healed. Do we remind him of his word? It looked impossible. But as he began to cry out to God, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 10, 15, it says, And he said, Hearken ye all Judea and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Amen. The battle that you're struggling with tonight, each and every one of you, is not yours, but it's God's. That thing that you're going through is not yours. It belongs to God. My Lamb of God, my Lamb of God. And it says, Tomorrow go down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Z, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. And you shall not need to fight this battle. Set yourselves Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judea and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor do you dismay tomorrow. Go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head and his face to the ground, and with all of Judea and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. When's the last time that we fell down before him with our whole heart? When was the last time that we didn't have something that was a little more important than falling down upon her face. Oh, my Lamb of God, I can remember a praying with the saints of old Scrappy. My grandma in her little back bedroom, Becky's, I'd go there and you remember. You know that I would go back there with her. Father was dying. And we'd get down beside her little bed. Oh, we'd fall down upon her knees and we'd be to cry out to God. Oh, Lamb of God, Marlene, we stayed there till the angel would come. Her crying out to God. Oh, Lamb of God, when was the last time as a body of Christ that we stay down on our knees and cry out to God the way that they did? Oh, Lamb of God, we need more people there that will spend more time on their knees. Oh, Lamb of God, I call it out to God and look into Him for those that are around Him, for our families, the ones that we love. Scrappy, we need people that will stand in the gap and make up the hedge for those that are dying lost, those that are sick and afflicted. My Lamb of God. In verse 22, in chapter 20 of 2 Chronicles. And it says, When they begin to sing and to praise the Lord, set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were against Judea, and they were smitten. Their enemies were smitten. Because they looked to God. They began to praise God and they sung praises unto God. When it looked like there was no hope, they lifted up the name of God. And God moved for their people. Oh, Lamb of God. I want to share a testimony with you. In 1993, in January... Funda had another blood clot. And this is one of the smaller healings. But I love to tell this. Scrappy, I love to tell this. <coughs> in January of 1993, she had a blood clot in her right arm. And it went up around her arm and it came around and down. It was so huge. Ethel, they didn't give her any hope. Helper didn't do anything with it and they, they couldn't afford to buzz. They couldn't catch it, they said. They were trying to give her the things to try to slin it, thin it down, but there was nothing they could do. It was too big. Her arm was so big, Vita, that it was swollen up and oh, she had to lay scrappy even in the hospital bed with her arm on a, a pillow where she could just barely move because the pain was so great. And she was in a hospital in Knoxville, Tennessee. Every day after work, I would drive to Knoxville and I would see Fonda and go in. 
Each day she would get worse. <coughs> Michael, they were doing all that they could do for her. But they couldn't do anything with it. Every day that I would drive down, I would see in my little car and I would pray and ask God to heal my wife, to remove that from her arm. And each day when I'd get there, she was in pain and she would be crying. It would break your heart, Vita, to be in there. What do you do when that loved one that you love so dear that there's nothing that you can do? What do you do when you know that you walk in and you see them in that shape and there's nothing that you can do for them? I want you to think about it. And each day I would go to Tennessee and drive down and sit with her till late and I'd drive back to work and go to work the next morning. And I remember going down. And she told me, she said, Gary, I can't take it no more in this place. She said, they're getting to where they can't do anything for me and they're mean to me and they talk mean to me. And said they treat me bad because there's nothing that they can do and they don't think that I should be telling them about the pain and all that I'm going through and said they're treating me mean and said I can't take it anymore. She said I'm leaving this place. I'm leaving. She called the nurse in there and she said bring the papers in. I'm signing out. I'm leaving. I'm not staying in this place the way that you're treating me and you can't do anything for me. And there I stood, Brother Scrappy, and I knew that there was nothing that I could do in the shape that she's in. If she threw that clot any part of it, Ethel, she was dead. What was I to do? She said, I'm going whether you take me home or not. said, I'll get somebody else. I'll call somebody. I'm going. The doctor come in and told her, said, if you leave, Fonda said, you won't be making it. said, if it throws, said, you're dead. She said, I'm leaving. We got in our car and we headed up I-75 and every time we hit a bump in the road at every little ridge in the road or something, she was crying out with pain. And we were sitting over there with tears running down her cheeks because the pain was so great. And I'm driving, scrapping, I'm thinking, what am I going to do? I'm praying. I'm crying out to God. And then my mind went back to one evening as I was coming home and I was going up Jellicoe Mountain and as I was crying out to God for my wife he spoke to me and he said you go ahead and praise me now and I began to sing a little song that evening and it went like this praise God praise God praise God praise God Praise God, 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 praise God. Oh, Lamb of God. Oh, I just knew that he had moved for her that night, but she had gotten worse, and now she was in my car, and we were on our way home, and there was no hope, Becky. There was no hope. What do you do, Scrap? I knew that God's voice had spoke to me. I knew what God had told me to do. I knew what God had said. And now we were here. And we were even in a worse predicament than we were before. But he told me to praise him. He told me to praise him. I got her home. I got her home. Got her in the house. Stayed there just a short time. And the pain was so intense. And she couldn't take it. She began to cry and she said, I can't make it. She said, I tried to get them to transfer me to Cleveland that they may be able to help me. But they told me they couldn't get me in. She said, I tried to get them to do everything for me, but they said there was no way, that there was nobody that would take me. She 
got so bad that I had to put her back in the car and try to head to London with her. I made it to London. We were headed to Cleveland to take her through ER, but I could only make it to London. We went into the emergency room at London, the old hospital up on the hill. There was a doctor on duty in her that we knew. And I took Fonda in and they were well aware of the situations and they saw and was what she had had. And they said, you should be gone already. You should already be somewhere. She says, you can't make it like this. And she went in and she called the Cleveland Clinic and they said, send her on up. She says, nobody had contacted us. Send her on. She should have already been here. A ray of hope at the end, it looked like. January 1993, cold. A cold, cold day. We loaded Aunt Fonda in the ambulance and we took her out to the airport that ordered a plane to come in and fly down to pick her up. We got to the airport, Brother Scrappy, and one of the engines on the plane wouldn't start. They had to take Fonda back off of the plane and put her back in the ambulance. They got a mechanic to start working on the plane. When you think that Satan is going to have mercy on you, when you think that Satan is not going to try to kill you, you're dead wrong. He comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. They finally got the engine working on the plane. and They got the engine fired up and they put Fonda back on the plane. And I went out to the telephone and I called her pastor at that time, Vita. And I said, you need to call people to pray. And he said, I will. He's going home to be with the Lord now. I got in my little car, Amos, and I headed up I-75. Funda was on her way. Headed toward Cleveland Clinic, knowing that it was several hours away. And I got just north of Columbus, and I hit an ice storm in that vicinity just around Columbus. Brother Scrappy, as I was going through there, I saw vehicles that were spinning around and going down into the medium, and people losing control all around me, but my little car was going straight ahead. But you guess what I was saying, Michael? Praise God. 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 Oh, Lamb of God. God had spoke to me back on that mountain. And he had told me to praise him. And now I was headed toward Cleveland. And I still remembered what God had told me on that mountain, Ricky. And I was praising him. Things looked worse and I looked like no hope. But I was still praising God. And we were going forth. I made it to Cleveland and I went into Cleveland Clinic. I stopped at the information desk because I was going to see which place they had her in surgery because... I knew that they'd taken her straight back into surgery. That was before we had the cell phones. The lady looked and on the thing and she said, you need to go on up to room so and so. And I said, well, maybe they just want me to go to a room and wait on her. Maybe one of the nurses will come to the room and tell me. And when I got up to that room, Brother Scrappy, and walked in, Fonda was sitting on that bed. You see, that right arm that was twice as big as that left, oh, it was normal. It was normal. And I looked at her and I said, what's going on, what happened? And she said, I don't know too much, but I know that we were in an ice storm. She said, I could hear the ice hitting on the plane. And said so they were hovered over top of me and they were trying to figure out what to do. Oh my God, my God. 
And she said, all of a sudden, there was a hole opened up in that ice storm and said they dove that plane down through that and said when they landed that blood clot was gone from my arm. Let me tell you what happened. Oh Lamb of God that when they opened up that hole in that storm that the God that I serve that was telling me to praise him. The God that was saying just praise me back on the mountain. The God that was on the mountain and said praise me. He looked ahead and he saw the storm that was ahead of the mountain and he was saying praise me and keep praising me and he reached down and he pulled that clot out of her body. He pulled it out and she went down and she was healed by the blood of Jesus Christ. How many of you are here tonight have been on the mountain and you praise God and there's a storm that's ahead of you and you praise God. Becky, I remember when we were in your living room and you were on the mountain and there was a storm cloud ahead of you but we were praising God because God was the one that was to heal. Cancer had nothing to do with you. Oh, Lamb of God. God heal my wife. And I'm here tonight to tell you that God will heal you for what he did for my wife. He'll do for you. Oh, Jesus. January the 27th, 1993, my wife, we climbed back in a car and we left Cleveland Clinic. Well, that was, there was no hope, but we came back healed by the blood of Jesus Christ, oh, the Lamb of God. He had delivered her one more time and we were on our way back home and we were praising God and we came down that interstate and I was still singing that little song, praise God, praise God. Have you got the faith tonight in a situation that you're in to stand and praise him? Have you got the faith tonight in whatever you're facing to begin to stand up and to praise God? Oh, Lamb of God. Oh, Jesus. The table is spread as God has spoken. Joyce, it's all right here for you. We're gonna be praying for the for the sick tonight. We're gonna be laying hands on those uh, that wanna come up and receive what God has got for them. Oh, Lamb of God, uh, have you got the faith tonight uh, to stand and praise God? Have you got the faith tonight uh, wherever you're sitting at in your seat right now to begin to praise God? Uh, have you got the faith uh, in whatever that you're facing to begin to praise God? Oh, Lamb of God, because I can tell you tonight that the answer is on the way. I can tell you tonight that your answers are on the way. I can tell you tonight that the answers are on the way. I can tell you tonight that he wants to heal his people. My Lamb of God.